Hello again. Um, this is my design for making an electric Spitfire. Um, okay, cards on the table. I'm not sure whether this is doable in a primary school. Um, I have made it with um, a, a small group of particularly able Year 6 and I've also done it on a, a design technology summer school with Year 7. I've included it in, this, in these videos because I, I just enjoy making it. Um, I found some plans for the Spitfire on the internet fairly easily and um, sized them to A4 and then enlarged them on the photocopier to onto A3 card. I then cut out the uh, fuselage shape and the wing shape. The wing is um, about 38 centimeters long. Um, after I've cut out the three pieces, the fuselage, the wings and the um, tail plane. The next job is to cut it out onto card. Now this is the difficult part um, for uh, students. Um, there's two ways you can cut it out. You could use um, a craft knife. Now I'm going to leave it up to you as professionals to decide whether your pupils can use craft knives. Uh, safely. If you are going to let them use craft knives you need to show them how to use a craft knife first of all. Always use a cutting mat or a safety mat and they have to have access to um, a safety ruler. Um, first thing you're going to do is to mark round the shape of the wings. I've always admired uh, the design of a Spitfire. Such a beautiful shape. Right, we draw around. Uh, this slot is so that it can we, later on we can s fit it into the fuselage. Draw around, and then cut out the uh, shape. Um, just to show that it is possible, we could use um, card cutting scissors. These are available from my supply service. You open up wide and take little nibbles. You can make an e um, a neater job with it with a craft knife. But um, it's not important exactly how accurately you do cut it out because the, the wing doesn't actually act as a as an aeroplane wing. So I'm not gonna make you watch me cut the whole thing out. I've got some that I've done earlier. In the best traditions of videos like this. There's the wing section, the fuselage and the tail planes. Notice that um, I've cut it out of Corex with the flutes going lengthwise so that we've got the, the most strength from the Corex. Similarly with the fuselage, I don't know if you're picking it up, the, the flutes of the Corex are going lengthwise. Um, I've scored the uh, wings across here so that they can be folded up slightly. Um, I, I believe that's called the dihedral in an aeroplane. Aeroplane's wings are quite often at an angle. Um, cut the slot here and a slot in the fuselage so that that can fit inside like that. And similarly the tail plane I've got two slots here and they can be slotted together. And already we've got the iconic um, outline of a Spitfire coming together, albeit a very simplified one. Uh, next thing we're going to do is to fit an electric motor and batteries to the uh, model. Um, this whole model comes in at under two pounds. Um, we're going to use a standard DC battery um, and a three-bladed propeller. Um, we just push the propeller on, sometimes need to tap it on with a hammer. Make sure you don't push it on too far, make sure that it spins around really easily. Um, and then we've cut a slot out of the uh, front of the fuselage here and later on we're going to glue that in place with a glue gun. But before we do that we're going to fit the, the batteries. Um, you can use a double battery holder, you can cut a slot out here and put a double battery holder in, but uh, I think it's easier to use um, single holders. And we're simply going to glue them 
one on one side and one on the other but make sure that when you glue the one on the other side that you've got the opposite wire so you've got a red and a black wire at each end I don't know if you can see that so make sure you've got a red and a black wire at each end um, just got a glue gun handy here I'll just glue these on there's one and the second one taking care to remember to get the opposite wire so we've got the black wire at that end try and get them lined up so that it's symmetrical and there we are um, next we're going to make a small hole just behind here in the fuselage we're going to use a sharp pencil carefully so that we can just tuck one wire through it doesn't matter which of the wires and then we're going to cut them and strip them I could do this more neatly but for speed's sake I'll just do it together quickly strip the ends and twist those two together so we're going to be using two AA batteries so it's going to be a 3 volt circuit Similar to the other end, we don't need we don't need them that long, so let's trim these back and strip the ends ready for connecting onto the motor. And twist the wires to stop them from getting into a tangle. Now the reason I didn't glue the motor in is that we need to make sure that, that the propeller turns in the right direction. So, to do that, we need to experiment. Let's bend the tags back a little bit. Slot the motor in. I, I will glue it in in a minute. And we'll just tuck that wire through one terminal. It's a little bit fiddly. There we are. And tuck the other wire into the other terminal. go and we'll pop the batteries in and find out which way the motor goes I've no idea and the other battery make sure we put it the right way around oh now that was really lucky because that is turning the right way um, the correct way is so that the air travels back so the air should be going back this way so once you've got it going the right way just take one of the batteries out to stop it you could fit a switch but I'm, I'm just going to switch it on off and on by taking one of the batteries out and now I'm going to um, glue the motor in I've just realized I've forgotten to get uh, another glue stick I'll be, just be one second there we are and let's glue the motor in now I'm very careful with a glue gun this is a high melt glue gun as well and some glue along the top there we go. And we've only slotted the wings in, so let's glue glue the wings on to make it stronger. And along the bottom here. And we'll glue the tailplane wings on as well. Just notice that one of the wires has come off. Um, what you can do if you do have access to a soldering iron you could solder the wires on to make it even more reliable so that's the finished Spitfire um, well almost finished um, we're going to hang it from a wire and to find the point where it's going to balance 
um, all we need to do is to push a pin through here and then hold it by the pin to find out where, it, where the balance point is. It's usually around about the middle of the batteries and then I can thread through um, a piece of string or fishing line and then um, to stop the string or the line from tangling up um, I use a small swivel, I don't know if you can see this, you can buy these in uh, fishing tackle shops and it stops the string from tying itself in knots. So um, I hope you enjoy making this simple uh, Spitfire toy. OK, let's have a test flight. It's great having a score hall outside my office to try things like this. We can switch it on just by putting the second battery in. We could put another switch. We could put a switch on it, but uh, I'm happy doing it this way. Now, for some reason I don't understand, I'm sure there are people out there that do, um, the plane will only fly in one direction, in this case clockwise. Um, if someone could email me to explain why it won't go anti-clockwise. Right, off we go. It takes a while to get itself sorted out. And we'll try and pick it up. There she is. Oops, too quick for me. And these are very uh, cheap batteries that I'm using here. But surprisingly, this plane will fly for about an hour. I think I better stop before I get really, really dizzy.